We are surrounded by the big cats of Africa at the moment. <laughs> you can see how great is that to be sitting almost eye to eye with a lioness. It's pretty amazing. Now, we often have leopards walking around the cars and the lions are actually the ones that are even easier to habituate around the vehicles. She would not be standing right there if she didn't want to walk in this place. And they've got plenty of places to sort of go around. I'm just gonna shuffle chasing the shade. The youngsters are actually coming now too. Let's see what their reaction is with the cars. Oh, it's so beautiful. Here yeah, they all come. We're all gonna funnel in a line. They're going the other way around. They're going around the back. But they're, they're definitely hungry. You can see some of the little ones are looking thinner than the others and it's important that these youngsters continuously get meals so that they can grow into the biggest and the strongest lions that they can be. It's the same thing with Hosanna and Shongile is that they need to constantly keep... Look at this, Seb. Here's your cat here. You could just about reach over and scratch yeah. it. One just walk right past the car within a touching distance. But I'm going to keep my hands in the vehicle now Mary Mary you said it's so close so cool it is <laughs> it's pretty exhilarating you know uh, I definitely get butterflies in my tummy when a lion when a leopard walks past or when a lion does it and I haven't got a door on the side of the car it, it gives me the heebie-jeebies more than anything but I know that as long as I keep my hands and my feet in the vehicle and I don't shuffle around too much and draw attention and break the silhouette of the car I'm fine they're not worried about me they don't want to eat me even when I'm out of the vehicle and you spot lions on foot, most of the time they just run away from us. So they're actually quite scared. But in the cars, we have this different relationship with them. We're sort of neutral. They don't mind us. We follow them around. They walk around us. It's quite a great relationship that we sort of have. It's like being a rock, except not the kind of rock that a rhino or a buffalo or a hippopotamus or even an elephant would rub up against. I'm glad that they don't rub up against us after they've had a mud bath. But they're moving into these drainage systems now. They're wanting to catch something. They're hungry. The one lioness, she doesn't stop for too long. She's up and down the whole time. And it's a good tactic, especially if they just want to get something small um, to catch something. We could do Inyala, Impala. All these types of animals will also be feeding down along the drainage line. So as soon, I think, as they hear some shuffling in the leaves they'll make a move even during the day so we're getting to the point now where we might have a situation where we break that whole stigma that is attached to lions where people say that big cats do not hunt during the day now that's an old wives tale hi cats which way are you gonna go we've got more cubs we've got one going in front one going behind now just be careful said so they're right behind one's right behind you this one is okay though you guys don't even care, hey, with the cars. They feel, I feel as though the, the youngsters don't mind us. This one's a little bit wary. What's wrong? You can go in front. There's plenty of space. Looks like you're one of the young males now that's walking behind us. Good oh boy. They're growing up so quickly. Now, a question from Charlie, and that is, would these lions start hunting smaller prey if they had to? Yes, I think that's what's going on over here. I think they've got to that point where they are so desperate now, even if they catch a daker, which would not even be a mouthful for each of these lions, but if they could catch a kudu, ideally that would be much better. Um, and I think that's what they're hoping to stumble across. An adult a female kudu would be great. That would supply them with full bellies that they'd probably finish it in the late hours of the evening. A kudu bull would probably last until tomorrow morning because I wouldn't be surprised with all the commotion that would go on if the Birmingham boys would come streaming in because it seems as though they meet up with Nkuma Pride every single night. They might not spend too much time with them all the time but they definitely pop past them just to make sure that everything is okay, everything's going to according to plan, you know, there's no new males trying to push in here. It's good that they continuously pop on, uh, pop on, pop in. And, and just check that everything's right. And then they go elsewhere and then they go and rest somewhere. Sorry, I'm just shuffling around in my seat. I'm fighting off flyers this afternoon and this is where I wish I had the tail 
like a lion has to be able to swat them because my hands are absolutely hopeless. It's very quiet out here. A couple of bird turtle doves are chirping in the distance. But I think they've picked a good time to start moving. Like I said, the wind is just starting to pick up. And we know that wind is great. Especially when you've got very hungry lions that want to hunt. This is where they also get sloppy though when it comes to the cat's hunting technique when they are tired like this is another cub just walking past the vehicle and we're just waiting for one more now I think one two three four no we're waiting for two more now Jackie you're wondering how do you tell so easily if they've eaten or not sorry <coughs> Excuse me, I always seem to sneeze around the cats in the last couple of days. Um, so Jackie, the easiest way is just to look at their bellies because you can see they're quite thin now. So even if they did catch something like an impala, again, it wouldn't be a meal for the entire pride, you would see that their bellies would bulge slightly. It's very easy. You just got to look at the stomach and if you're still unsure, you can look around their mouths, you can check around their necks, on their legs to see if there's any blood. That's also another sign. That's my favorite little girl. She's beautiful, don't you think? Still looking for attention, but nobody wants to give it to her today. She got slightly swatted by that adult li other lioness. Oh, no, you're not. Look at this. You know what? Those teddy bear cubs are the most... Well, there's only one left. They were the most persistent three lion cubs I've ever come across in my entire life. Do you remember all those wonderful sightings we had where the mothers were trying to wean them and they just weren't taking no for an answer? And she's gone in now. And I wonder if she'll try and suckle just for comfort. She looks like she's grooming, but I mean, we know that that's very, very close to that lioness's mammary glands, that area that she is looking in. Yes, you see there she is too. She's trying to suckle, but there's nothing. Mom's not producing anything at all. She's obviously just that hungry. They were weaned ages ago. They typically wean for about six, seven months, maybe give or take, depending if there's... Um, younger cubs in the pride too because then you get the older ones trying to suckle from one of the other lionesses that happens quite often they're not prone i mean then it's not uncommon so what am i talking about it's not uncommon to see allo suckling take place but she's not really having any that she wants to sit up and actually catch some food so by licking it and kneading at it you know that young youngsters trying to stimulate milk but mom hasn't been producing milk for a very very long time and now this is going to be the fun part because where the lionesses are crossing now that's a really good spot that's going to be our spot to cross too because i need to try and figure out where they're going to come up from there they're going towards gallagher's shortcut but it's still quite a way to go but maybe they have a, a definite route and they'll help us and lead us towards the road the closest water from here is gallagher pan or viatella they could go either way Jeffa, you're wondering, due to the lack of food, would this cause the pride to split once the cubs get older? Maybe, but it's it's not necessary. Remember, this time of the year is when the buffalo come back. This is when we see the big herds of buffalo. But because we had all that late rain, it's obviously changed the seasons up slightly because the grass is a lot longer than what it should be, than what it normally is. So as soon as the buffalo come back, they'll be fine. I don't think that they're going to split. I mean, not not yet. We see amber eyes and the youngest lioness going off from time to time, but they always come back. So no, I don't I don't think so just yet, but it can happen, it most certainly can. If, if you hear squeaking, it's me, it's just exceptionally warm and myself and Sebastian also need to stay hydrated, so I'm also going to sip water. Yes, here comes the wind. I'm sure they'll be appreciating that too. That must be nice and cool on their fur. But they can pant. They can keep themselves cool by doing that. And once these little ones go through, we are also going to have to do exactly the same thing. Keep following them. This is where we followed Mvula the one day. What a nightmare. It is a very thick block. It's one of the least 
one of my least favorite blocks to drive in. Actually, I reckon you could ask Tristan and Byron and Ali and Jamie and Brent and James and everybody else that works here, and they'll tell you exactly the same thing. This is the worst place to drive, but we'll give it a bash anyway. We're going to send you across to Tristan now. He's got something that the Warthogs would find very tasty.